I was on the internet, on Twitter, and I seen Yuzo Koshiro, one of my favorite musical composers of all time. And he was talking to a, a fan or a supporter or whatever, and they were talking to each other about, you know, how film music, not film music, but video game music sounds so generic and stuff like that. And I took it upon myself and I agreed with the both of what they were saying. But I went off Facebook and put on my fan page and I, you know, made it aware that, you know, video game composition and film comp composition with the with the scores, they, 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 they just don't sound, they, they don't sound as good as they used to be. It sounds generic and boring. It's like, it's like they're not even trying to make good, you know, great memorable music. It's like they just go in there, make the music, and be out, you know. And I figured I just want to make a video talking about this real quick. I just don't understand why is these film composers and these video game composers alike are so obsessed with sounding so generic and so boring and watered down. I remember back in the days, it was one or maybe two musical composers that will work on a film tv show or like a video game that's how it was back in the days and i think it was much more harder for a video game composer to really make it you know be taken seriously because at the time in the 80s and even in the 90s people used to look down on video game music like oh that's just you know it's just noise it's just noise right that's what people used to think of video game music now people embrace it more they consider it as real music but back then video game music was not really taken seriously people used to look down on it and video game music right video game music used to have like lower quality like 8-bit and 4-bit games used to have soundtracks that had like lower powerful based analog synthesizers or old computers to make the music and then when a 16-bit and a 32-bit game started coming out they started to use actual more synthesizers the Genesis used the FM synthesizer um, well I think it was the YM2616 if I'm not mistaken and the Super Nintendo what they would do they would take actual instruments compress them and put them on the computer and they'll have somebody with a keyboard or something, I think, and they'll play the music, and that's how they, you know, whether it was electric guitar, acoustic guitar, a piano, horn, French horn, trump, trombone, saxophone, clarinet, ukulele, uh, recorder, it didn't matter, banjo, bongos, it didn't matter, right? They would, like, put that on the actual game, right? But even in like the arcade machines, they would have people that actually have actual synthesizers putting on the on the on the arcade because the arcade chip was a lot more powerful than any 16-bit hardware, 32-bit hardware. I don't know how far a uh, arcade machine will be. I think it's a little bit more powerful than 64-bit gaming, but 64-bit is as close you can get when it comes to like cartridge-based games. But yeah, I mean, back then, people used to look down on, like, those type of music. And music from films, they used to use synthesizers and stuff. Like, you know, synthesizers. And I think it was like that in the 90s, too. But I think around, like, the 2000s, because dolls were becoming more popular and more used in the studios and stuff, I think that's when they started using more like that. What have ever happened to using synthesizers? I'm not saying they have to use synthesizers, but my humble opinion, I think they should bring it back because synthesizers can do a lot of cool and innovative great things that other, other like, instruments can't simply do. A synthesizer can now, it can replicate any type of instrument and it can make its own sounds yeah as time went by you know people started using you know better synthesizers in films and tv shows and movies i was watching brad fidel break down how he was using synthesizers in the terminator 1 and terminator 2 and my gosh people remembered the first terminator film music and the second film music too was great too and he used better, different equipment for both those films, but they were equally both great in my opinion. And I mean, James Cameron knew how great he was, that's why he brought him back. And Brad Fidel was using synthesizers throughout the 80s into the 90s. I don't think he makes film music anymore, I think he retired. But 
you know, Bloodsport, the guy who made that music, he used synthesizers like the Yamaha DX7 and other synthesizers to make that great soundtrack. You know, the guy who made Blade Runner's music, I think Van Ven Halis, I think that's how you say his name, the first Blade Runner, not the not Blade Runner 2046 or whatever the hell that one is called. I'm talking about the original Blade Runner that came out in 1981, I think. Yeah, that was used with a synthesizer, and it makes perfect sense because Blade Runner takes place in the in the future. I remember I was like, you know, I was, you know, curious. How did Bruce Falconer and his team made the music? He made music mostly through a synthesizer. They used synthesizers. The main one they were using it was the synthesizer that that came out in the late eight uh, late nineties, called the Alesis QS6, QS7, QS8. Now it's the same thing. It's just that it has more keyboards than the other. QS6 had less than the seven. The QS7 had less than the eight. But they were pretty much the same, you know, Frieza steam, Cell steam, this uh, Super Saiyan 3 theme, you know, Trunks theme song, the Gohan theme song were mostly used by actual synthesizers. It was like one time or two times some, some tracks would use actual guitars, like the bass guitar, the heavy electric guitar to make some heavy metal music and stuff like that. But that was only a few tracks. But most of it was made by, you know, synthesizers. And they were great music. Great music. They knew how to make great music. Scott Morgan, Bruce Falconer, Mike, I think Mike, whatever his name is. But they all made great music all together. It was a teamwork. And it made great music. And I was listening to, the, for the first time a couple months ago, listening to some Sonic 3D Blast music on the Saturn. On the Sega Saturn. I didn't... You know, I never had the Saturn, and I never played that music, and I never even listened to the music before until recently, a couple months ago, because I was curious. I've already owned, you know, 3D Blast on the Genesis, and I know that that was different music. But I listened to the um, the Saturn version. It was great music. I think it was on par with the Genesis version, you know, because they, were, they, they did different approaches of making the music because 3d blast on the genesis was you know on the genesis they had used the ym2616 sound chip and then you had this other guy who i think it was american he used another synthesizer and i think he would probably used different synthesizers for all i know because it was a cd we all know that the saturn was a cd based video game system and it was much more powerful than the Genesis. Uh, duh. It's going to be way more powerful than the most powerful, you know, 16-bit game ever. Because it's on a CD. You know, but... Yeah, I mean, I listened to it and it was really good. And I knew he was using synthesizers. I was listening to Tekken 7's music. My god, that music is so ass-tastic. If you listen from Tekken 1 to Tekken 5... That was great music. Tekken 6 was hit or miss at best. 7 was complete fucking garbage. Same thing with Street Fighter 6. I mean, I only heard like maybe 4 or 5 characters, theme songs, Ryu's, Juries, which is hip-hop. Why is she doing hip-hop music? Why? I don't understand it. Um, I understand they want to switch up the music and stuff. I'm, I'm cool with that. But it still got to fit with those characters. Like, I don't want Ken coming out with some fucking yodeling music. Like, why? Don't do that. Because it doesn't fit a guy like Ken. Just like funk music doesn't fit Ryu. The, the song itself is not bad, but funk music for Ryu? He's like he's about to go outside and go pimp some holes or something. Are, are you kidding me? And the same thing with Mortal Kombat. Recent Mortal Kombat games. Like, NetherRealm Studio. Is Dan Forden still making the music for those guys? You don't have no more John Williams. No more... Uh, Hans Zimmer Danny Elfman You don't have people like that no more You don't have people like Brad Fidel as well You don't have people for video game composers Like Yuzo Kishiro, Jesper Kidd You know, you don't have people like that Making music, you know, the woman who made the music For Castlevania Bloodlines and Castlevania Sympathy of the Night You don't have people like that no more The woman who made the, the original Street Fighter 1 and 2 music Yoko, whatever her name is You don't have people like that making music like that no more it used to be one or two people making the music. Sometimes it'd be more than that, but usually be one person, one guy or one woman, one man, one woman, or two people doing it. 
and it would come out with masterpieces and they were using limited software limited resources and I don't understand with all the technology that we have today and all these composers now for films and video games they like have no vision no creativity in their body it's like they just got them from SoundCloud or something and these and they're like a bunch of beat makers trying to portray to be music composers or something that's what it feels like I know that's not what's really going on but man these new film composers and these new video game composers most of them they are not cutting the mustard they're boring they're bland they're generic and some of them actually suck ass and I'm not trying trying to be mean I'm not trying to be evil or, or anything like that. I'm just keeping it 100. Ain't nobody trying to hear that bullshit, oh. man.